Good morning. Tonight is the yard site of Aaron, Aaron the, the high priest who blessed the Jewish people and pursued peace and wanted everyone else to be lit. So he's the one that lights the candelabra, the seven branch candelabra. The transformation of our seven attributes, our character should be lit. So I want to speak about Aaron and because he's the only person in the, in the Torah that mentions the date of his death on the fifth month, on the first of that month, which is Menachem of tonight starts the first of Menachem of the consolation of the father, Menachem of. So the Rebbe says that this tells us that all of his service was reached its perfection and now was time to ascend on that day and therefore you are to reflect on what Aaron represents and how to tap into that in your own life. So the idea of loving your fellow as yourself is best expressed in Aaron. And it says, Lefi shahaya Aaron redef shalom matel ahava. He pursued peace and implanted love with amongst people. He brought the creatures close to the Torah. The Rebbe says here that that's through the Torah Hadasha Mi'iti Teitze. The new Torah that's going to come out of Hashem, meaning living the Torah, not just reading the Torah. The experience of the author of the Torah. The channel for doing that is to set up the world with the love that Aaron represents to be lit, to be someone who gives. So when the when this day arrived, the clouds, the protective clouds we had in the desert, in the, the heat of the sun, we sought shelter in these miraculous clouds that gave us protection. That was in the merit of Aaron. Because of the love that he brought the community, the sense of community and care, peace, That was this protective makif, this surrounding force that protects you from a distance. You don't necessarily see it, but it's there. There's a protective cloud that the, the peace, the alignment with the, the unity of the whole world, when you, when you reflect that unity, you draw on the makif. You don't have to understand it. There's a force of love that, that it brings about. The peace is the greatest um, vessel for blessing. So I want to learn a little bit about, from this about Aaron because his name is comprised of the word Har, mountain, who in Yana'ava, when you, it sticks out and, and it smacks you in the face like the beautiful vistas of a mountain offers. That is love. That damas aleph and the terror is given on a mountain. The fact that you put an aleph in front, aharein, it's the har. You have an aleph, first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Meire al sheresh ha'ava. That indicates the source of that love. Echad aleph shelif ahar. By saying that this mountain has... Um, a source. Yes, it represents love. What's the source of that? Aleph, the letter Aleph, when you rearrange the letters that spell that name for that letter, is Pella, wonder, miracle. The love of Hashem to us is a miracle. It could have flipped out the other way and we could have, you could, an AI could have created some type of consciousness that could experience its own my son said, if you were to create a robot, does that make you its God? What a powerful question, because it has the, this idea that you set the game into motion. Right? So 
it's the Pella that it's actually, reality is actually sourced in something benevolent, God. And that recognition is called great love. We've spoken about that in Parshas Baleska this year. I might um, refer back to it, especially in light of its conclusion, which I just stumbled across because it's the end of this week's Parsha in Lukute Terra. The whole Sefer B'Minbar concludes this Shabbos, and it has an addition here, which goes back to Parshas Baleska, which is where it talks about Aaron, the high priest, lighting up the candelabra. And there it says that it explains the gates of tears because there's so many, so much suffering, there's so much tears, there's so many, um, there's such a um, pronounced calling from so many people that are going through so much Even though the gates of prayer might have been closed after in the times of exile, the, the gates of tears have not been closed. The reason why tears come from the eyes is because it brings about ayin ba'ayin yiru. Eye to eye, we will see Hashem. When you look in, like, Shir Hashem praises the way doves gaze into each other's eyes. There is a unity that that engenders, the presence, the da'as, that that in, um, that is that brings about this ayin ba'ayin yiru you're going to see eye to eye which means to say mystically that when you when you see things in the right way when you try to see things in the right way you arouse a naim ha'el yainim the supernal eyes welcome not the eyes from a hands man tail the spies but eyes that look back at your at you eyes are the windows of the soul soul to soul ruach i see ruach the spirit draws spirit and it references kabbalistically netzak bahid the kidneys the, the the loins what that represents it's outside the body the heart is a part of the torso the main part of the body expressive of an inwardness and this is already when you communicate outwards the thighs are outside the body and it's also associated with prophecy prophecy can only get up to that realm when it's outward when there's a communication and this is drawn through tears it says here in, in the finale of Bamidbar and the tears represent the eyes looking up to what it is seen as at a distance and something welcome Ted and something that's um, an expression of yearning for that so the eye to eye you will see you will both yearn you and your creator are both going to be looking upon each other and that's called Ene Hashem El Hatzadikim the eyes of Hashem are upon the righteous Pika open your eyes and see and the seeing is as expressed in Haisali Dimasi Lachem David Melech in Psalm says, says the my tears were my bread welcome thank you my tears were my bread when you eat you could see things in a different light right it, Kabbalistically, it's related to, it's from the verse, Aya Hashem Ali Kacha, where, when we refer to Hashem as where, Aya Aleph Yud He, those refer to the Gimel Rishanim, the most internal divine attributes, so to speak, which are crown, which is will and pleasure and will, crown, Chochma, wisdom, Bina, meditation, understanding. Those aspects of divinity are accessed in this way by, see, by the tears being the bread, the, the ability to get um, energy, energized for something. That's Chochma Bina, Nachabad Keser, Chochma Bina. 
the Gimel Rishenim, it refers to them here, the first three spheres. So I couldn't resist bringing that in. There's this idea of um, vision is connection and bread. It's associated with Netzach Vahid, which, which are, are going to be important if we do some of the Sakuta Terra that I've lined up. Um, okay, so that's basically where I want to go with this. So to continue with, we were saying Aaron's name is an Aleph with the Har, the Aleph, which is the Pella, the miracle of, of this mountain, which is this love, so that God has love for us as a miracle. Or if someone should stumble across that in their soul's journey, that they actually experience what that is to want to serve his maker, his creator, by doing the Tariq Mitzvahs. Shalachen avohib avarabo. When you realize that that's this accomplishment of this great love, which is beyond anything that's to do with the world. It's a, it's a new experience. It's what Aaron wanted, wants to do by lighting up the Menorah, lighting up a Jew to that realization. So there is a campaign that wants to say that, and this was, there was a time the Rebbe spoke about this a lot, actually, that there is a decree of exile that has been cast upon the Jewish people for thousands of years that is response for sinas chinam, welcome baseless hatred and Aaron is, whose your site is tonight, is expressive of the rectification of that to annul the reason for exile therefore you bring redemption if we baseless hatred brought us to here if we have the opposite unconditional love if we attain that that's redemption so the Rebbe says we've already achieved that we've gone through the 42 journeys that's called the wilderness of the nations and we are already, the Rebbe says, al Yarden Yerechai. We're at the Jordan in Jericho. Jericho by the Jordan, whose name means Yar, Yarden is Yerida. It's a, it's a going down, and Yerechai is a fragrance. It says Mashiach will judge Meirach Vedayan, he will judge with scent. He, he will be, he will have that connection, the ability to look and smell justice. So the whole reason for exile, since we've already gone through the 42 journeys and we're already on the, what's called the lock of the Holy Land, the Jericho, the Yarden, the Jordan River, is the ability to recognize authentic um, relationships and therefore achieve that peace and love between each, each person as Aaron embodies. He is the quality of lighting people up with this the idea to unite for common purpose and and, uh, and common spirit. But now that has been accomplished. We've already corrected the reason for the exile and had enough. I mean, Jews had to do a lot to try and save each other in some very dark times in our recent history. And we've, we've already corrected that. And now the whole purpose of love of one's fellow is to be a te'ima, a taste. So the Chassidus explains the difference between a taste and a fragrance. I think the mimer we're gonna learn um, makes that distinction. Um, 
tasting has to do with Seiros um, me oli. We say your taro, David Amalek says, is within my whatever that is, the kishkas. It's within. It's like we said, you eat the bread, and it gives you life. When taro lights you up and you're lit that is more in line with the idea of taste as opposed to smell, which refers to the makif, what trend, what's not, you, you can't see like the dog, if, you, if she smells something, she's, she's running around looking for the thing. You, you don't know where it's coming from as much. That's analogous to mitzvahs. You do a mitzvah, you don't necessar- necessarily see the benefit of putting a loony in Canada into a pushka, a charity box, but it has benefit. Mitzvahs are the fragrance of one's clothes. The thought, the thought, speech, and action have a scent. If they're in line with divine will, it's a pleasant fragrance. But it's not as internalized as something you eat. Something that has taste has reason. The word ta'ima, taste, is ta'am, is reason. So we're supposed to have, through our reason, through, through, through awareness, through adopting this type of mentality, you can experience a, a taste, and to the beginning of the whole banquet, the whole feast, to the beginning, to the onset of the future promised redemption, by achieving a unity, that's above any divisiveness or division. That is when you all get along. Why can't we just all get along? The, the core of the soul wants that. And there's no competi- competition or jealousy. It's all about lighting each other up. That's the yechida. That's what the core of one's soul wants to do to his neighbor. Dargas hachmishis. That's why we say it's the fifth month, the first day of the fifth month, Aaron's Yorzeit is. The, the fifth level being the highest. It's Hamishas Lepara. It's a spiro kol in the, the center of all revelations. Sheba Chol Shava, which exists equally in every single Jew, inherent to their soul. Don't do it. Then there's no liver for you later. She loves liver. I wonder why. Sit and behave. Sit. Okay, no liver. So there's an a, a opportunity to have an ex, uh, a, a, be at the reception. And, oh, look, she listened. <laughs> to be at the reception and have an appetizer. You can have a taste of it now. So it's associated with Terah as opposed to mitzvahs. To be able to experience it directly. To, to see the... the um, the, you can atta- attach to your the origin of the thing more when you understand that when you taste it when when it's a fragrance it's just in line with health let's call it so mayrich v'dayan to be able to judge through scent fragrance we now could have a taste of the pleasantness of that which is the the redemption state of getting along the yechid of the nefesh of the nefesh the fifth dimension of the soul. Everyone has connection to the singular um, general soul of Mashiach who judges with scent, the scent of smell. Yarden Yerechai, which is Meirach Vadayan. You gotta know these phrases. She's actually jealous right now. If there's hugging going on and she's not part of it, she jumps on you and and like uh, nibbles at your sleeve. So when it says that Aaron is pursues peace and brings the creatures close to the tarot, the creatures, even someone that's just a creation, that's the only merit that they have. They were created. Mazel tov. I'm not playing with you. I'll play with you. I'm not playing with you. She won't let me take the thing that she wants me to throw. Needs all that attention. Clever. You could learn probably a lot from that. (laughs) Okay. 
the, the ability to draw them close to the Torah that we're saying here, the Rebbe says, the intent is la kiruv lelimud Torah degula hasida. Is the closeness that's achieved through learning this t- stuff, <laughs> the Torah Hadashim iti the new Torah that comes out for me, living it. So it's a das. We'll always come back to that. Okay, so we, I didn't quite complete the name of Aaron. We have the Aleph in front, that's the Pella, the miracle of God loving us. Then you have the Har, which is the love. And then you have the, the He and the Resh, that is. And then you have a Nun at the end. Nun is a letter that's very long, it goes below the belt. It goes below the line, representing the ability to take a good idea, a unified idea of love, and bring that even to the lowest realm, that it should be expressed in a dignified, authentic, genuine uh, virtuous way. Even in, to those Jews who have, have fallen. Which is represented by Hebrew letters, like the Nun, that go below the line, taking it down. So the Yard and Yerecha is this descent, Yerida, the Jordan River. The Yerida. Why am I getting Jericho and Jordan mixed up? The Yarden is the Jordan. Yerecha is Jericho. Nun is you take it everywhere. You take what's above the line, integrity, divine purpose to every way where even to those who have fallen expressed by the day by the idea that Israel Jew Jew um, Israelite <laughs> is an acronym for Yashishim Ribu Yaisi there's 600,000 letters in the Torah there's 600,000 male Jews 20 to 60 at Mount Sinai there's 600,000 letters in the Torah. Um, so Torah is the force of bringing that into knowing how, no, or being drawn to bring that out effectively and successfully. It's done through Limud HaTera, the Tera Kadashim Yitzhi Okay, so know that well. Now just a little bit more from Lakute Tera. I was going to do that Bahalaiska part that it, we were um, referred to before about Aaron, but it seems that it might be... Not bookmarked, and that was probably for a reason. So let's just um, connect this with one, the force of this, um, the ability rather to see is v'nehi, it's netzach haidi said, when you take the midas outward to the other. So there's an outwardness to that part of the, of Kabbalah, of the spheris, the, the, um, the structure of the spheris, that the lower three, the triad of Nihi, Netzach Said are about outwardness communication. So when you have a proper connection that is expressive of, first you start with the mind, you, you bring that, it becomes a meditation that affects and, and goes outward into the heart, and then it goes outward again to the other through these, the three latter uh, spheres. And that's a chayd yisayd. Here it says also, it's just popping out at me.
that reach is the level of ratzen and tainug. Will and pleasure. As it explains with regarding the concept of yard and yerecha, a descent that descends into bringing divine pleasure into everywhere, into the lowest realm from a reach, from a surrounding thing like the cloud we said is a sheltering force, a unifying force. Okay, so I wanted to just do the, the end of this mimer. We started this yesterday. Remember we were talking about Yasef tucking the silver goblet into Benjamin's pack? Kesef, we said, was this love. It's a treasure that's hidden. You don't know about it. Why don't you know about it? Because knowing about it is reserved for those who will survive the test of pride. So the Ava Batanugim, the love of delights, when it's actually pleasurable to do Torah mitzvahs and to serve Hashem, that's reserved for the humble. That's called in Kabbalah, Mechusim B'Yasayid Ima, hidden in the foundation, the Yasayid of Ima, of Mother, which we said was Bina. So within Bina exists the Yasayid, the ability to communicate outward, the ability to take everything, the kol, remember we sang, which becomes kala, by adding the hay, and you have not just the yisai, but you have the af, the post dynamic after you've brought in malchus. So, when you already have achieved Ashes chayla teres baila, the, the final becomes the crown. So we spoke about Rabbi Yochan Manzakai because of his humility. He didn't know whether there was any personal benefit from his experience of his meditation, which was a very um, engaging, um, conscious a state of consciousness, where he wasn't left to be able to pay attention to whether it felt good at the time for him to be that close to Hashem but just in a state of absorbing very deep um, my states of mind. So here it says, we're going to understand the difference between reach, which we spoke about, and taste. Hagam shishtem mach even that both contribute to the ability for the mind to function. Yeah, like you give the smelling salts to the guy that's fainted and bring his mind back into conscious state. state. Or you have um, like tchotchkes that smell nice or something like that, I suppose. <laughs> and, you, and it's like a meditate, it helps you meditate. Or just clean up your bedroom, teenagers. There's a difference between both. Although both of them contribute to your mind's function, there's a difference in the way that taste and smell differ when related to the mind. Because taste is of food which enlivens the person, like the air pnimi, the inner light, the ability to have some understanding of what your purpose is in this world. So that's eating something, that's ingesting, that's allowing your body to absorb something. You're present there. And something has, you see that you're getting enlivened from something. That's called an oyer pnimi. You see purpose in your life and you don't regret every minute you're spending um, cooking dinner for your children. Whereas scent is something that's surrounding, it's not experienced directly. Because the fruit that you, that gives this nice scent, 
remains intact. You didn't eat. You didn't eat the thing. So it's from a distance that you you um, interact with it. You sense it. So fragrance is not about ingesting. It's about something that communicates from a distance. It exudes from the thing. You chew up and you have a whole digestive process starting with the swallowing and, and the whole thing. It comes inward as opposed to something that's from a distance. When it speaks of Anshir Shirim about these Beloved, the uh, beautiful romance there, and they eat together. That is Ava, Abba Ve'ima, Chachma and Bina coming together, which they always do. Abba Yenek and Mazal Hashmini, which is said in Kabbalah that the father nourishes from the eighth Mazal, which is a spiritual source of nourishing. This is an inwardly ingested experience. Something that you understand, it speaks to you, as opposed to something that is a distant echo. And this is also experienced by the righteous souls in heaven who benefit from the radiance of the Shekhinah. They take pleasure in that because they absorbed through their mind godly ideas which is inwardness it's the ability to understand the dynamic so that's achieved through mind through meditation and deep introspection so that's why we say the terach the terah the teach, your teachings are, I've absorbed them in my system. Lachu lachmu, go and dine together, it says in Shir Shirin. Ki ubina nafkas. Because the terror comes from wisdom and understanding. Acha mitzvahs atzim shayshim rabkinas keser. Whereas the mitzvahs, they come from the crown. So you have the crown that sits on the head, that's above the wisdom and understanding. It's the pleasure and will, which are the trachamuda air, the 620 pillars of light, which are, the that's the gematria of Kesser, crown is 620, the 613 mitzvahs plus the seven rabbinical mitzvahs, welcome everyone. Torah boost, I hope you keep boosting Torah, that's awesome. Um, Hafatza Samayanis, Mashiach now. <laughs> God bless those who um, are on the same incredible mission to bring this to the world. Umisham EF Sharlavay Hagil Bipnimis Mamish. At the level of these 622 20 pillars of light, the level of mitzvahs, you don't understand what putting on tefillin accomplishes in a way that's inward, like ingesting ideas, and you see how that affects you directly. When you do a mitzvah, you don't see the benefit directly like that. But rather it's described as Hashem showing himself from afar. My friend Michal calls this the cloping hand. It closes and opens and opens. It grasps and does not grasp. I don't know what that means. Sha'in Nimshah here it explains. When the when pleasure is not drawn into Pnimis, an inward experience, an awareness. Your soul is on fire, but you don't feel it, it's like a lot different. So when the Tainug, the divine Pleasure is experienced in an inward way. That's through mind, understanding the, the meaning of things, as opposed to just doing it. That's the, the difference between terror and mitzvahs, taste and scent, fragrance. Lateich hasagasay mamish, to be part of one's mind. Rak hareach, but rather just like a fragrance.
which are the garments of the soul, bear with them a fragrance. And that's actually experienced in, in Gan Eden, so I hope it's uh, the right type of um, detergent. So there are transcendent ideas of divinity that that you can't quite get a grasp of, but you still do. The, you light the Shabbos candles, and I guess that's one of the most lit mitzvahs, so probably that's not a good example. Or you keep away from eating the cheeseburger that you grew up eating, Hey, stop it! You won't get liver. Okay? You want liver? You behave. Just de destroying our property. The uh, trampoline in the back. Don't do it. I'll bring the liver here and just sit it. I'll hold it in front of your nose. You know what? That's what you have to do when you're in, when you're broadcasting and you're babysitting a dog. Take go out with the. Yeah. Sit and behave. Sit. 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 She's all messy. She can't come in the house now. Okay, you just earned a time uh, in the field, a field trip. We once had to do that for a few days because she got bit, uh, sprayed by a skunk. Sit. Sit. Okay, so... Let's just read the final paragraph here in full because it's really good. Um, good meaning... Um, it's right. V'nikra levush, it's called a garment. There are, there's nourishment for the soul, what we put in our mind, what we absorb, and there's garments, that's the surrounding, what we put, which is how we behave. What you put in your mind is what you understand. It's not Makif, it doesn't surround in the same way. Like garment surrounds you in a scent or the clouds that we spoke about before. It says that Yitzhak smelt the fragrance of Yaakov's garments. He was dressing up as Esau, you know the story? And he sm smelled his clothing. That's what it's referring to Kabbalistically here. That you could have a scent of the person's thought, speech, and action, whether they have a pleasant fragrance or not. And that's judging with fragrance, like Mashiach will do. It's an authentic encounter that is just and right. It's right. What else do we have to contend with here? <laughs> So there is a makif v'halavush. So there's a surrounding energy and a garment. Hanim shakla tadikim ganedin. That's drawn to the righteous in the in the Garden of Eden. The ma'ase mitzvahs for all the mitzvahs that they do. There's a garment and a nourishment for the the soul. Nehenin meziva shkina. We say. We always think that, that means a, a site, but is it an is it an eating and a work? It's an orchard after all. Paradise is a part of us, an orchard, because there's different fruits, there's different pleasures. Living up at the hotel, hotel California. Velavush hanim shach letzadiki meganeden b'maisa mitzvus v'sham nizkar hamashal kibara kamavrik. That there it mentions the example of lightning bolts to describe this. They wear lightning bolts? That's really f Marvel or something like that. And the altar of muses or suggests that it's, this, this is the vision. It's vision. That's a bit, um, it's very concise, isn't this? He's not explaining exactly what he means. This is the this is the note of the Tzemak Tzedek. It's very concise, but but I think that it it's still it's packed with um, spiritual energy that you don't have to understand every single every single thing that we say. 
the ideas themselves carry with it a lot more than we could possibly um, appreciate or, or become aware of. As it says that Hashem upon you sees the Yetzer Kebarachitzai and his lightning bolt shoots out like an arrow. Or vice versa. His arrow is like a lightning bolt, is more correct. As it says about Mashiach, he will smell justice, not by his sight. Zehu makif el That's actually referring to a higher level. That is a more a supernal makif, surrounding energy. And there's two levels of transcendence, of, of makif, encompassing. One that's the anointing oil, and one is the incense. Um, refer to these two makifim. So you, you're anointed, that's like a makif, you didn't eat the, the, the oil. You didn't put it in your spaghetti or something, you're just pouring on your head. Or the kteris is an incense that is makes a fragrance. The second level is the we're suggesting the shem. That makes sense. I mean, he's a mashiach's anointed. That's what mashiach means. Shem and hamishcha, the anointing oil. That must be the higher level. It's a. It seems closer though. So that doesn't. And kteris, you've never heard of anything higher than kteris. Anyways, we should look it up. Tells you where to look it up. And now, just for the fin- the conclusion here of this minor, mimer, the Hina Yerecha Hu Irahatmarim. So we say that Jericho is the city of date palm trees, lulavs. The Tamar Hu Tzadik. We know that Tamar, the date refers to the date tree refers to a Tzadik. Kamei Shkazim Tzadik Katamar Yifroch. He will uh, the Tzadik, the righteous, will blossom like a date palm. And our lulavs are when they're closed. They're these sticks, basically, as opposed to like a spread out leafy thing. The tamar, the date palm, has one heart. Even if it spreads out, I suppose it comes from one source, one core, the center, just like the menorah, incidentally. Meaning one will in his heart, her heart, to Hashem. And we hold the, the lulav incident also upright. So it's, it has a core and spreads out from it. And also we hold it upright. Or the, the tamar stands straight. But you've seen some wavy palm trees probably also by the wind. Um, so too, the righteous, their hearts are aligned upward. They have purpose, and it's felt. We perish The reason why we call it the city Jericho is the city of date palms. Hainu kiyesh based bechinas tzadik el tzadik tachtein, which takes us back to what we said earlier in the mind, where the two levels of Yosef and the Benjamins, Joseph and the Benjamins, the supernal tzadik and the lower tzadik, lower in the sense that. He's not able to um, light himself up. He has to use joy to do that. It's um, as opposed to um, the ability to just do it through a, a meditation necessarily. He might not actually have that superpower yet. Yasef is someone who, who's done that and already and is able to um, help others get there. And let's see the light will cast in here. There's another note from the Sambak Tzedek, it says, um, when it says that your heart is only directed to Hashem, that's Tzadik Elohim. Kach ein bali bai ala achad hainu Tzadik taktain. Just, so we, the, 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 the expression is sort of long-winded. And it refers to two levels. One to Tzadik Elohim. And the Tzadik taktain. So when we speak about the higher righteousness, the supernal righteousness, which was Yasef, 
like we said at length yesterday. That's das, it's presence, it's being very there. Hamachaber miyached ava. There's a level of that that is exper- expressed as a relationship between Abba ve'ima, Chochma and Bina. So it's the Bina, the meditation lit through Chochma. But Tzadik HaTachtein, who begins to say the Mechaber Zun. Whereas Tzadik HaTachtein, the Benjamins, that represent the Yisoyed. So you have the mind, and then Yisoyed is the ability to use that mind to communicate and go outward. And that's the Mechaber Zun. That takes the emotional qualities and unifies them with outward. Zun is za and nukva, malchus. So when you go outwards, the next generation's malchus. Bezeu inin yasa shalom li, shalom yasa li. So there were seven walls around Jericho, which represent the seven nations who come from the seven emotional attributes and getting them right or not. Ki yerecho hi manala, because the Jericho is the lock of Eretz Yisrael, Bechinus Yisait, that's the foundation, the Yisait. You either speak or don't speak, you relate or you don't relate. It's the lock. So everything is internalized and not expressed until the Yisait has Yichud Zun. That's the um, Tzadik Tachtai. You take um, you bring it outwards, not just into yourself, but you, you bring it outwards, like we were saying before about community and that. That's why Jericho was not divided into tribes. It's considered the, the, the everything of Israel, the lock of it, the entrance way to everything. The main um, reflection of a tzaddik is through the fact that he keeps mitzvahs. He follows the commandments of Hashem. And that's the level of the scent of the clothes, as we said above. Which is why Jericho is a city of palm trees. And the, the Jordan by the Jericho. Is Lashon Hamshacha, the Yerida, means this descent. Shehu Hamshacha's Bina Lamalchus, which means the mind, Bina, the meditation, going into Malchus and bringing that lit state to outward to the, to the another. To Hainu Hamshacha's Yichud Elyon, Shalidei Tzadik Elyon, which means to take what the Tzadik Elyon accomplishes, which is the supernal unity, Yichud Ava, Shayim Shakam Kilamata. That that also should be experienced by the lower level of consciousness, which is Yichud Zun, that's which is the Tzadik Tachtein. That's what it means that everyone has the silver goblet hiding in their bag somewhere, that they just um, have to open up and and, and uh, drink from. We spoke about the connection between why is it a goblet. It's because it's the yena shel terah, the ability for terah to make have taste and um, and affect our mood in a in a positive way. Um, wine, if used correctly in in, rich, in Jewish ritual, is is a means for people to get beyond their differences a little bit. you look into the darkness of the Kiddush cup and you say, this week, I don't know what it accomplished, but I know that I'm, I'm gonna sanctify it and it will come out all right. And, and bless it, have a great day.